if it's going to be muted for all intent and purposes. And this is going to be a recorded session. Later, we will actually make sure that this will be distributed properly and be good use. Um, I know there is some infringement about Zoom and everything. Everyone web is very concerned, but I'm highlighting to you, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter because if they want to know about this content, it's good for them. We're trying to do this for as much as people as possible, but we start with our own contact first. Uh, thanks, Vincent, for signing in, number five. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will start now. We will start now. So before I... Uh, uh, I call up uh, Pablo for this. I thank everyone for taking your time at 2.15 to join in here. I hope everyone have your lunch. Everyone's still in a good mood, safe. Uh, we're already on our 22nd day in the lockdown here. Uh, we don't use the word lockdown. Unlike China, I think our word is called MCO. It's called uh, uh, basically, it's not another political party, but MCO means movement control order. So for all intent and purposes, um, I am organizing this so that everyone understands what this is all about. I'm organizing this is because um, um, we are still on a movement control order, which is equivalent to a lockdown, uh, unlike the, uh, unlike the uh, uh, in China, which slowly open up. And China, uh, for all intent and purposes, is about a few months ahead of us and ahead of the rest of the world. So at this moment, there is only one party really, uh, which is China having the experience to really uh, show us what will happen when one day, let's say on the 14th of April, which is to me unlikely, uh, perhaps on that day, uh, we announce that tomorrow on the 15th, we are not extending the MCO, everything go back to normal, everyone can start uh, to move freely. So exactly what do we expect will happen? So uh, I managed to contact my clients and also my good friend. His name is Pavo Tan, all right? Uh, his name uh, might sound a little bit strange to everyone else to you, but doesn't matter. Pavo actually means treasure, all right? So uh, Pavo Tan here uh, is actually a Malaysian so that uh, everyone can be familiar with him. So he actually know what's happening in Malaysia anyway. Uh, he's been a practicing accountant before this. Uh, in Malaysia and for all intents and purposes, he has been in China for many years, uh, particularly in Shanghai. And then what happened is that he's now running his own uh, consultancy business in Shanghai. Uh, we have been in close contact over the years. Uh, he's also my uni mate, my good friend. We stayed in the same house together. Uh, so once we chat bef during the MCO, when I get bored, you know, I talk to him and then I say, hey, can we do one session like that? Tell us what happened in Shanghai uh, that's going to be beneficial to all our uh, connect, uh, our network and client. So uh, that's why he has very graciously said he will do it. And uh, basically uh, what I'm offering everyone here is to make sure that you know what's happening in Shanghai right now after the lockdown. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to ask uh, Pavel to take the lead now. And he's going to tell you and offer you a, a peek and an insight of a scenario in one of the leading cities in the world, Shanghai, after the lockdown. So uh, um, can we all give him a three uh, to say that really appreciate and thankful to him on the chat group and uh, so that Pablo can start. All right. Thanks, Ethan. Everyone is giving a three right now. Okay, Pablo, over to you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chris. Hi, everyone. Welcome to joining board for my digital presentation. My name is Pavo. I set up my own firm here doing business consulting firm. Uh, what we do is we provide clients uh, advising on the regulatory compliance, even the HR tax and so on. But our firm are running more unique like boutique firm. We're getting more involved. I understand more clients on the cases. We're bringing more supporting groups over here. Been here for the last 13 years and I set up my own firm for the last eight to nine years. And, um, Chris, been a good friend. Thank you for inviting me to come and uh, give this small presentation and share my idea with your inside here. Now, I have prepared this slide for the next 30 minutes. Okay. Mainly on this slide for the next 30 minutes, what is the new normal? A lot of people still don't know yet. What after happened after the lockdown? So I will share with you on my presentation here, the stimulus will be the following, okay? The perception and my experience. What happened after the lockdown? Secondly, in this presentation, I'm not putting in some complex statistics. Okay, there's no complex statistics. 
it's all supported by my community, my clients, my friends. And before this presentation, I also did spoke to a lot of my, my associates to gather a lot of information that I agreed with, so I'm putting it together. So neither I'm getting to a racial or political bias agenda. Why I'm saying that? Because why I'm saying that the racial political agenda, if you remember Chinese New Year, when China first started this um, lockdown, at that time we can see the rest of the world having like a cold war towards, the China, uh, towards the China. Why China is doing this? Why is this happening over here? But we are bypass that topic. We are way bypass that topic. We are way bypass the statistic that what is the death rate. I personally, I do not agree the theory that when China meant it a bad in China, it in fact the whole world. I just do not agree with theory. Neither I have any capacity to discuss where the virus comes from. Okay. Also, I'm not here to tell you how to run the business because over the last three to four weeks, the whole major community has been very stressed what is going to happen to my business, what happened to my career, and so on. And so I'm not here to advise how you're going to run the business moving forward. But I'm just going to share with you how we manage our situation. Okay. I was back in Malaysia for Chinese New Year, but I've been back here since the beginning of February. From the beginning of February until now, it's almost two months, like how we manage the situation that they were doing. For. So please sit back, relax for the next 30 to 40 minutes, enjoy the incubation, stimulation, and you'll be 10 presentation I'm putting up for every one of you. Are we good, Chris? Hey, thank you, Pablo. Yes, good. We are good. Keep going. Okay. This is the main area I will cover, the after effect to business by industry, the regulation. What is the regulation we can take benefit to? The employee-employee effect. The human resource, which is one of the main topics I will talk into later. I hope all of you will take consider about it. The trend of communication. How do we communicate with each other right now? Mm -hmm. The following one is an observation. Right now, China are not opening up. Don't get it wrong. China are not opening up. Okay. Right now, it's under the observation process. Okay. What is the observation is this? Until, until in the city or in the in the in a city or in the country consecutively 28 days, 28 days, if there are no spread, then the government will re-evaluate how to open it up right now. So China and Shanghai, they are not open yet. They're still under observation. They still count control. Social distance still are practicing over here. And a major upcoming event. And at the end of this uh, presentation, I'm just going to show with you a little technique, the tricks and how we use as we're facing daily um, our, our work. Okay, good. Okay. Now, China has been a manufacturer to the world. Okay. And everyone been doing business with China at the factory. If you have done a lot of due diligence on the factory, we will know that the factory here are doing in big volume, more margin, but continuously. They can't stop. Okay. Um, they can't stop. Right now, as we speak right now, a lot of factories have been closed. Okay. The only factory I see producing right now are those supporting PPE, uh, the private protective equipment, food-related products, and household products. Those are still ongoing. Okay. So a lot of global retailers have really cancelled the pre the pre before the COVID, before the COVID happened. Okay, the supplies management has disrupted. Okay. Factory are not able to deliver. Okay, look at the way. Factory trading, even the supply management. No one would like to stop inventory. Everyone deliver goods based on just in time. The raw material comes to my factory just in time. I produce it. For my factory to get a factory just in time, they repurpose it. So one product probably go to four or five factories. So that if there's one factory is stopped, it says the domino effect, the car is over to. Okay. The logistic is the biggest main factor. Now we know that the airline has been grounded, most of the shipping has been grounded. But the biggest carrier to the factory actually is the logistics. Okay, we can't deliver on time, this is a main factor. If you look at, um, let's give an example. Uh, um, sure. Let's give an example, maybe we'll talk about, let's say, F1, F1 event. The biggest business in F1 event is not selling the ticket, the cap, or the bill, or anything. The biggest business was Carrying the F1 business actually is the logistics. How they carry the team, the equipment, and so on. But as we know, for rest of this year, the whole F1 event has been cancelled. Okay. 
When I talk about logistics, it's not only about the truck. Even the right now, the delivery boys, they also consider a big logistic economy carrier to support the whole economy. Okay, so the manufacturing, I'm just showing another example to you. A lot of factories have been closed. Right now, they slowly open up, but they also don't want to take any order because factory can't open, afford to open a factory, open the door, take one big order, and then shut down two or three months later. So there's a lot of domino effect over here that the factory are still very, very struggling. Sure. That will lead to an unemployment topic that I will discuss later. Okay. By the way, by the way, mm -hmm. I just want to tell everyone, I'm just sharing what's going on here. Through the presentation here, there are also a lot of good news as well. I don't want to freak everyone out that I'm just bombarding everyone with all this negative news. But I trust that also about this news we're really getting from the, uh, from the news already. Okay. Now, we talk about service provider. Okay, apart from homeschooling and online gaming, they're doing very, very well. Most of the service provider are not doing well. And I talk about service provider, online marketing. In the past, um, when we talk about online marketing, uh, those are those Taobao store owner, Kmao store owner. Okay, even Alibaba, they also have a very, very, very high staff power to cater the whole business environment. Okay, it wasn't been good for last year in the trade war. But the rest of this year is not going to be any better than last year. Okay. Well, uh, now, in my latest slide, I will discuss more on about the professional service provider because I know there's a lawyer here, there's a lot of accountants here, there's a lot, mm -hmm. also a lot of um, um, white collar around here, which I will share with you all later. Mm -hmm. How we are managing this whole thing. Good. Now, hospitality here. Eh? Um, at February last year, right after Chinese New Year, the occupancy rate is 58%. As of today, February, it's only occupancy at 40%. Okay? This data is from all the reputable hotel chains. I'm talking about all reputable hotel chains worldwide through China and through worldwide. And all the employees from top to down are taking 20 to 50% up for the next four to six months. Okay? As we can read the news, a lot of major airlines, they are enforcing the employee ticket and pay leave as well. But over in China, they still maintain, maintain all the staff for all the hotel chain, taking 20 to 50% cut for the next four to six months time. Okay. F&B and retail. I only focus on this as a mid to the above. Because I found that over here, the F&B retail at the lower end, they are still able to survive it. So when I talk about lower end, it's like a, Wali Janaira, uh, Nasi Lamala, and that category, they are still able to survive through. But from the mid-level and the above, they are expecting a 40 to 50% revenue drop. Okay. That is related to the uh, disposable income. Disposable spending is okay. going to affect drastically, which I'll highlight later. And of course, right now, we are still under the observation state. It means that most of the outlet, you only allow to cater not more than 60%, of the capacity. For example, a restaurant can cater up to 40 people, but right now you only allow 20 people to come in. So each table, one table sit here, one table have to be empty, and one table sit here, one table will have to be empty. And this observation period, we foresee it probably will go another, given the situation right now, probably another six months. Okay. How, how, how are they controlling it, basically? They just not allow you to come in. Okay. For example, like you like, like we go to the bank, we take a number, we line up. Okay. Right. But the bank there probably can take up to 20, 30 people. But they make people wait outside the bank. Okay. So you take 10, 10 people come in, one go out, one come in, one go out, and one come in. Very similar to our shopping uh, supermarket now. But in Shanghai, it's blanket nationwide, every shop, every bank, and so on. Right, right. Okay. okay. Keep going. Yeah, that's good. Good info. Thanks. Now, um, China has taken a very proactive role. I believe Malaysia also taking a very proactive role, getting a stimulation program. I think over here, how I feel that is, I slip it into the two. One is the right direct impact, how I feel I doesn't hurt my cash flow. First of all, is a bank uh, taking very easy. The bank allowing all the borrower, individual and company, not to pay first. 
Okay, don't pay me first. I will not penalize you. Interest will still accrue. We discuss later, six to nine months later. Okay, we will not blacklist you. We will not evict your your home. Just don't pay first. Kill. This is how they are managing right now. Right, the bank are really supporting because. I trust a lot of people are working like white collar employee are very heavily financial committed. Even a lot of company also are very um, financial committed. But the bank are taking a very active role. They said, "Don't pay first. We figure something out later." Okay, which is a good thing to do. Okay. And also, bank also right now in China. I hope to see that will happen in Malaysia in the next couple of weeks or the next couple of months that they lower down the benchmark. For the borrower, okay. So I myself, I within the business community, literally we every day are trying to talking to the bank. How do we repackage our loan? How do we refinance our loan? Right. Okay. And the bank are very welcome, but they are not giving a direct say yes yet. They probably gonna take another three to four months do their own internal study. How are they gonna re 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 redirect the loan, repackage the loan, the offer to all the borrower? So take advantage of it. This is a direct impact that we all can enjoy. So basically, it's not across the board, Pablo. It's across the board in China. Okay. It's a uh, instruction given by the government. Uh, right. It's a central, by central people. Tell right. the bank. Give everyone right. a book for next to six, six to nine months time. Okay. Right. Uh, how are they going to figure it out? As of now, we don't know. But everyone just take advantage of it. Right. So for those factory which have very heavy, very heavy, very heavy gearing, financial gearing, actually they are quite, you know, can take a breath. Okay, understand. Okay. Keep going. Government also here allow delay in paying tax because in China we pay the VAT tax, so called like a GST in Malaysia, you need to practice on the every month. So government right now though allowing Delaying three to six months, but of course there's application process to go through. The future insurance, uh, it's like in Malaysia, so for the ETF. Okay. Over here, the social insurance they cut it into half. They right. they lower down into half. If you especially the retirement fund, I think the okay. company here we paid about thirty five percent of the gross salary as their thirty five to forty five percent of the gross salary to uh, as their retirement fund, but they reduce it down to the half. So okay. this is a really immediate impact. Since we come back, everyone take advantage of, of this. Just to not to stress up the capital. Now, the indirect impact. Okay, um, two days ago, Malaysia Prime Minister also said, okay, as much as if your company have more than how many people you're entitled to get two to three thousand ringgit per month for next couple of months. China also has a lot of this in that are um, subsidized the grant to apply. Okay, but as of right now, the application process are still very, very unfair. Okay, because this is the first time China are facing this. But the government on the top, yes, they are giving out a lot of subsidies. Imagine the second and third tier city, the factory, they have 20 and 30,000 workers. Imagine, mm -hmm. you know, factory still want to make sure that they can't allow. China can't allow having like millions of workers unemployed because can't, they just can't allow. They always try to find other solutions uh, to encourage the uh, second and third city, stay where you are, okay, mm -hmm. maybe get some benefit out of it. But whether for the factory to able to get the grant or subsidy right now is very, very unclear. So even though I know Malaysia are giving out a lot of subsidies, so to a lot of business owner there, um, Let's not take the high hope on that yet, because in order to see that money will come in, in China, I still up to three months, we also don't understand the process yet. Let's not put the high hope on that yet. Let's look for other solutions. Okay. Because not every time when government give a gun out, there is a very detailed audit they have to go through. For example, your factory has 70 people. Are those 70 people work in the factory more than six months? Mm -hmm. Have they been paying their like retirement fund? Have they been paying tax? So there are a lot of audit process to eliminate a lot of those like a phantom company trying to take advantage of it. Sure. Yeah. Just, just wondering, Babu, I have a question coming in. Uh, wondering, uh, what is the interest rate for the uh, bank right now uh, under the so-called government business package? 
to help people, roughly, in Shanghai? I, I don't have it on top of my head. I don't have it on top of my head right now. Okay. Okay. But I would say January between five to six. I would say. Five to six percent for business yeah. loans. Yeah, for business loans. Okay. Seven to eight, maybe a bit of high risk. But I think that giving five to six, but if you have good potential, maybe three percent also got. But five to okay. six, five to six is like it's a norm right now. Right, right, right. I think two years ago it was running about eight to nine percent, but right now I'm pretty sure it's about five to six percent. Which means now it's fifty percent cut, or no, it's still going. It just has suspend the repayment only. They suspend the repayment. The uh -huh. interest cut is going to happen lower down more. They just uh -huh. suspend the, the the repayment period. Okay. But right so, now, any any new application that's submit in the norms, uh -huh. the interest mm -hmm. rate is between five to six percent. Okay. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing well. Yeah. Uh, now, China here, they have a first stimulation program to support the whole economy. I think they're giving another one out, probably coming soon. But because this stimulation subsidized package is not going to support and create a new growth to the environment. Okay. We just make sure the employer and the employee, that's your safe. Just go through the, this half period of the next three to six months time, or maybe up to nine months time. Okay. okay. So if any one of us able to get the subsidized package offered by the government, take it. But please do not get excited and start to create a new production plan. Because what is important, most of us are discussed right now for this year, is how we reconsolidate our resources, where we can save money, how we can reconsolidate. For 2020, 2020, you're just going to do nothing and sit tight to hold through the way. Okay, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, I think the most importantly, I mean, China and Malaysia are doing right now is most importantly, they are put on the table and there's a roof over the top. Exactly, I mentioned earlier, the factory, uh, the industry are not affected, are food and household related products. Okay. And the bank are allowing to delaying the payment of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, installment. So everyone right. has enough cash just to survive through. The bank will not come and invade the house if you're not paying it. But from right. now on, I will still try encourage everyone start talking to a banker. How do you want to refinance it? Okay, if you can prolong it, reduce it, your money repayment another 20, 30 percent, take take advantage of it. Because never in the history the bank are so lenient. To the borrower, okay, never in the history. While we are having this difficulty, while the bank are giving out very leniency, take advantage of it. Okay, good. Now, um, following topic, I will just separate the two. One is employer and what's employee, and then I'll conclude about how the employer and employee how to we really work together and go through this something. Okay, as all the employer, we are ready. Expected three to six months time, reduce sale or maybe impel sale. Okay. Uh, low demand for whatever product we are selling, even for only for the PPE, food and household product. And the low demand, economy is about demand and supply. Even though China right now slowly opening up, factory opening up, who they can sell it to, they only can sell it to domestic. The rest of the world is closing right now. Even in the local domestic, Spending power are still very, very limited because everyone are very, very con concerned. Everyone is very, very conservative when it comes to their spending. Right. So in the past, we like to buy something nice to get ourselves, go for a nice holiday, and so on and on and on. For this year, I'll just tell everyone to forget about it, just sit tight, stay at home. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah, production, of course, the production, they're not able to work. And such a product we work prior to COVID-19. So just before Chinese New Year or during Chinese New Year, a lot of international purchasing order here has really been cancelled. Okay. So during the Chinese New Year period, from the mid of January until Tsangobe, 15 right. days, actually right. I will say the whole China are not enjoying the Chinese New Year. Everyone are sitting at home, struggling, thinking, how are they, what is their next move? Okay. okay. Now, um, just go back a little bit. Of course, people know about the virus spread out. By end of December, January was a sudden peak, and right. China took a very drastic 
lockdown on the second day of Chinese New Year. Okay, some of them might blame why are taking so long, but actually to me, I find it is a very good move because Chinese New Year, people are leaving the city, going back to come home, going back to where they come from. So they disperse the crowd naturally on the before the Chinese New Year and up to second day of Chinese New Year. That's where they do the lockdown. So right. what the lockdown happened? A lot of manufacturers, business owners, no one is having a good time, but I was trying to strategize how to work around it, which until later at the stage, I will share with you how we manage to keep this through, okay? Now, um, of course, from Chinese New Year until now, there's about 8,000 of force major certificates in issue. What I mean by force major is this, in the law there, due to the natural disasters beyond our control, the factory was shut out, so there is a legal protection to protect the factory not to get through. So right now, the, about 8,000 been issued until end of um, March. So it this was is issued by the government, is it? Yeah, yeah. Of course, there is a very strict condition. Usually, I think the big, big factory, they have to apply for it. One of big factory are those major factories, about 40 to 50,000 employees. So okay. you are, we need to apply to it, is it? Yeah, we need to apply for it. Okay, because uh, in Malaysia, the, we, we, we don't have such a cert. That's why I just thought it's quite useful. Yeah. Uh, it's, basically, with such a cert, it's conclusive. Lah. Yeah, but a lot of big state on a lot of big factory that they are catering a very, like 50, 60, 70,000 of employees, they will have no choice but to apply for this. This okay. number is still coming. Right now, this is a lot of people contracted to shoot. Okay. Next. Factory, I just go back to factory a little bit, are so intense. They are, uh, some of the factory, they have to get into like two or three hundred pages of contract. If there's any delay per day, there is a penalty. If you're talking about automotive factory, the producing automotive part, if there's any delay by a minute, there is a penalty. Okay. Let's not talk about before. I think the quality of the Products that have been produced in China has improved a lot, but they always find a lot of way how they penalize the factory if you do not deliver by three o'clock, out the door by three o'clock. Again, this is just in time management over here. Okay, understand. So, uh, so the contractual dispute right now is worth about 600 B, you know I mean, P? about right. 370 billion. Okay, and the number is still quite, it's still coming right now. Now, to all my surprises, is okay. Um, I'm just touch base a bit about the litigation, how the factory protect themselves, okay. Um, in China court system, they are very, very effective. What I mean effective is this every application, litigation that we found in, the court will have to start process within 15 to 30 days. Okay. okay. Start okay. Hearing, uh, and so on and on. They have to start the process within 15 to 30 days. But as of since the virus outbreak from February to March and up to now, the court has not accepted. You can submit, but they are not accepted. So okay. they have a delay for almost 60 days already. Okay? And this okay. is a major one, but I'm talking about journey the SME industry now, okay? So, but because of this process being delayed, a lot of entrepreneurs, they start to, do I still want to go to the court for the dispute? Do I ask for that? Because it's not get anywhere. So how do we mediate this thing through? So since we come back until now, there's a lot of buyer and the seller. How do we mediate this thing through? Okay. Right. But you feel commonly what they say, okay, since the last deal we place in, they've gone wrong for whatever reason. Let's talk about the next deal. The next place order. What is the discount? What is the speed? Okay. Until the conversation for the manufacturer are very, very comfortable, then okay, I will start my production block by block. Okay. Yeah. Which means project to project, like case to case basis. Huh? Those yeah, we case delay case with all the offers. Yeah, because most of my factory here, they do not sell clothes anymore. They sell the production line. So they open up production block by block. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, That's just useful, yeah. Yeah, good to, good to see that the whole business environment, people are not so aggressive with each other. People are trying to like understand the whole environment. Right. Okay, so I don't, that there's not, maybe there are a big number of litigation coming up after May or June, maybe, I don't know. But okay. a lot of entrepreneurs, other business owners do not consider that a production. 
final concern we have Understand. So, so I think this is quite useful for everyone to know here because is that you know rather than strictly focus on the dispute, uh, yeah. we are looking at them talking about okay lah fine we have some issue on the other thing, so yeah. let's not talk about that. Let's move on and we can still deliver now that we are back, right? Yes, yes, yes. Even mm -hmm. is it the court? Court even though they run are very efficiently, right? But if you given this current situation right now for the whatever February and March. The court are not taking application yet because they also want to control their workflow. Right. Suddenly, yeah, suddenly the application by triple or four times, like how are they going to manage it? I think right. this is what they will want to control the workflow a little bit. Give a bit more time to all the business owner between the buyer and seller, figure it out. Okay. How you figure it out? Just go figure it out. Right. All right. For a win win. Uh, yeah, how the individual owner will figure it out, the first thing, okay, what can I do with my bank loan? What right. benefit do I get? But actually, if you look at it that way, actually it's not that, not the best situation the business owner are facing right now. Of course, the perception of the trade war happened in China, everyone was very disappointed. And before the new year, I was hoping 2020 would be a very, very good year. By the Chinese year come, when there's another downturn, of course, you get very disappointed by a lot of people. But seeing the whole environment, after I come back months and a half, right. I found that most of the business owners are more understanding because okay. they know how deep. When it first hit, it was bad during Chinese New Year because no one knows how deep is the debt. But when the Chinese New Year, after the Jack Mobe, the first two weeks, people are still a bit edgy. Like, where is this heading to? Okay. But I would say by end of February, everyone kind of has this confidence. It's not that bad. Yes, we just have to stay put at home. Right. Yeah, we just have to stay put at home. Time to right. rebound our business. Time to think about how we're going to challenge a new market. Okay, good. Um, right. uh, I'm just going to intervene you a little bit. Uh, obviously, right. uh, you are now going to other side. Um, right. You are talking about the, the, the good things that we see is that people are more understanding now. Um, beside the few industries that have been uh, impacted, uh, this is a question by Fong Yi here, uh, negatively, as you have said just now, what are the bright sparks uh, or if there's none at all? Is there any uh, industry that's doing a lot of growth right now? Uh, what are the bright sparks at the moment? Okay, the growth right now, like, okay, we talk about the food product, household product, um, the PP product, another Big industry, booming industry that we are looking at in China. Okay, it's a baby product. What is that? Sorry? Baby product. Baby, baby product. Yeah. Because Good we household it. and PPE and yeah. baby product. Yeah. If you're talking about a new idea, a new spark. But first, before that, there are also a lot of uh, gaming, online gaming. All right. Online gaming. Online education. Mm -hmm. Online education has become very, very big thing right now. And I believe also because there will be a very high birth rate by September, October, November. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a reality. <laughs> this is a reality. All right. No, but I mean, nothing to do in the house, yes. Yeah, yeah nothing to do. Because I, I'm kind of seeing a lot of local friends like, hey, you're pregnant, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Like, and this may have a very, I'm talking about double. Double to picture. Right. If you're talking about Last year, China, uh, let's say there's a 2 million, 200 million of new birth rate. We're talking about this year, probably four to 600 million new birth rate. So wow, four to, it's about, about, about 200%. Yeah, double the triple of last year birth rate. Like, I don't have the exact, but I would say, let's say about 100 million to 150 million. The next, this year, we're talking about 300 million. All right, right. Okay. Now, of course, I don't have a very specific scientific. Uh, Static to support that, but just giving the feel of it, the whole environment, like what I see here and what people say, and how we share our information within the community. Okay, just to recap your, your answer, basically, you're talking about at this moment, uh, the, the bright spark at the moment is the food industry, the yeah. household yeah. industry, the one that is actually supporting the PPE, personal protection equipment, yeah. as well as uh, baby products, which is one that is uh, uniquely set stand out at the moment. Uh, and obviously, uh, we can see growth in online gaming because people are not going out, therefore they need to play at home. Uh, yeah. Online education, right, for the kids again. And uh, again, for the kids again, the pregnancy, because you're looking at the, the population growth probably by new birth uh, yeah. to be double or triple from yeah. 200 million to easily 600 million. 
don't hold me the number for that, but I can give I can give a more specific number after this presentation. Sure, sure. We won't hold you for the number. I know you're not contributing, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, keep going, keep going, Pablo. Uh, doing well. Just, just highlight about the product. Okay. I think a lot of people are asking what is a new, new, new product. The online education is not only for the kids' online education. I mean, if, okay. if you want to spend more time on thinking about online things, it's very good. For example, house cooking. Okay. Calligraphy. Okay. okay. Uh, anything that we can learn at home online. Not only for the kids, but not for, for the adults also. So online yoga, whatever. Like. Online yoga, online calligraphy, online cooking. Yeah. Um, right. yeah. And that, that is quite doing quite well in China during the lockdown period. Okay. Because General as a whole, people are not really expecting a career growth, which I'll come back to the which I will move on to the later. Right. So, I move on? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Please now, move on. Yeah, the employee effect, uh, this is something that I appreciate the most after being here for 12 years to 13 years. Why I say that? Shanghai, especially Shanghai, the cost of living in Shanghai is increasing. And the cost of keeping the employee every year, I have to increase the salary at least 10 to 15 percent to right. keep the employee that I want. I might okay. increase up to 20 percent if I think it's a good investment. It's right. not demand from the employee, but it's just overall the cost of living in Shanghai. The graduate is just increasing. That's why it becomes too expensive to maintain a business in Shanghai. The inflation, uh, basically. Uh, the inflation. Now, right. having said that, but by the way, I also, I also have invested myself into a recruitment company. I don't think my recruitment company is doing very well this year. Because right. having said that, the demand overall in the market is not there, even though the system is fully opening up. So employee, every year I face staff turnaround time after Chinese New Year until May. Okay, after Chinese yep. until May. But right now, I don't think any staff want to make a major decision to move, wait for stability. Okay, I'm not facing any pressure that stop coming to me want to discuss about their salary increase. Um, look, some of the employee, maybe a single parent, they choose to work from home. Now, the work from home is a very new thing in China. It's only happened after this breakdown, after this outbreak, after this outbreak, and it's until right now. Whether the productivity or the work from home, whether it's there, I'm, we just have to check and balance. We just have a look and see. Right. Even though, in the Western country, they are very encouraging work from home theory that will increase the productivity, the parents can stay with the kids and so on and on and on. But over here, it's just and still a very new thing. For me personally, I don't see the productivity yet. I will encourage it. The reason I encourage it because of the movement control of the observation. I will right. encourage it to do something new. But I right now, I don't see productivity yet. Okay. Now, Heaven said that most of the in Shanghai, the white collar industry service provider, they also encourage it yet. But of course, there are people taking advantage of it, but there are people getting ahead of it as well. Now we are implementing a work on home program, but there is an evaluation process too as well. Whether you deliver your work on time and so on. So if you work at home having a good time, if you're not delivering after a month, they have to have the advantage whether they want to keep the employee. Okay. I believe, uh, I believe, uh, I believe Malaysia slowly mm -hmm. after the unlock was slowly moving towards the work from home as well. Sure. I believe because this observation period will go on for three to six months. I remember I said I managed that year until a CT continuously 28 days, there's no new cases. Then they will reevaluate. Are we safe to reopen? Okay. If we up to 27 days, everyone's happy, but at the 20 if we come to 26 days, everyone's happy on 27 days, there's a new cases, it starts all over again. So if I can just stop you there, because it's perplexed me, what's the what's Shanghai now? Do you have like how many days consecutively no queue new cases yet or what? Um, I think by the beginning of the conversation, I, I don't really look at those statistics anymore. I personally okay. feel it's unreliable. Okay. Okay. Um, Shanghai is a very condensed concrete jungle. Right. 
next to my op- next to my office uh, next to my house building is like a three star hotel. Okay. Right. Now they use the whole three star hotel as a as a quarantine house for the new car. Okay, now from people coming from our state, from the foreign number. From time to time, from time to time, I still see ambulance and the medical support staff uh, escorting whoever staying there, go to the car and go, and probably they go to under a different facility. Okay. okay. Um, so, you, so you think that there are still cases going on now? Uh? There are still cases going on. But what's the statistic? I just don't look into it anymore because. Every time looking by those statistics and number going up, it can become very, very stressful. Sure, okay. sure. Keep your distance. Overall, yeah, but China overall, people are practicing social distancing, which I will cover at the end of it. It's okay. a new normal that we have to live on. It's a new life that we have to practice on. Okay. okay. We just have to be smart, be cautious, who we hang around with, where we go to, and so on. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Um, now, the employee effect. Go back to the simulation program just now, talking about the bank. Okay. Right. So I also encourage the employee in Malaysia right now, delay your, your financial commitment. Start talking to your banker if you can, with financial packages, because you're not we are not getting any fee, any salary increase. Okay, the company are not doing very well. This is a fact that everyone has to accept. Which I found one thing very good is happening in Shanghai right now. From the month of March and April. People are tend to accept these new challenges. Okay. On the positive side, uh, as an individual, as an employee, uh, I found one thing very, very happy to see. Uh, everyone has improved their stress tolerance level. Okay. okay. This is a norm. I think you guys will feel that effect as well when it's slowly opening up. Why is that? Maybe after two phase of 14 days in the house coming out, it does improve the stress tolerance level. Okay. okay, got training. Uh. But, I mean, this is a general as a norm. Uh. I think people coming up because Shanghai is a very content, very intense city, you know. And also, people are very go, 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 quiet, quiet. quite and quite and why, why is it so late? Why is that? But during these two, three months, you no, know, people are quite and probably okay. If you're late, that's fine. Everyone kind of accepting it. It's mm. less complaint. I don't see so many people winding. I need find my staff, my own employee, and then like overall, not only my employee, because they are still working there as well. Um, <laughs> overall environment, even to a lot of bosses, um, even to a lot of environment, I spoke to them, how is your employee feeling right now? They said, actually, they are very motivated. Okay. It's good news, you know. They've all been okay. tired and staying home for so long. Have no choice to accept this catastrophe, or you talk about outbreak, or the impact happening to the world. But there's nothing we can do about stopping the virus spreading or curing, but something we can do is stop spreading it and try to reconcile what we can do better. Okay. And actually, it's very, very good momentum. Very, very, very healthy momentum. I hope to see that in the future, but I believe they will move, move, move in that as well. And just, also just, because, a question, just a question, just a question, sorry, I just interrupt you. How long is uh, the lockdown in, in, in Shanghai exactly that, that you can't go out effectively? Uh, I have that in my last tip. There's two phases. I have that in my last. I'll have okay. that in my last. We'll go there, we'll go there, we'll go there. Yeah. I have that in my Keep last. Going. Keep going because I want to know whether you know we, we are experiencing the 28 days. I'm not sure whether 28 days is good enough to keep everyone motivated. Yeah. I will cover yeah. that topic later. Okay. Because, um, I'll cover that topic later. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. So, so on the individual side, actually, people are trying to accept that the options are limited right now. Not two, three years or four, five years ago when the economy is good, I have to do this, I can do that. No. Right now, people can accept the options are limited right now, given the current situation. Okay. And they are most importantly, in the economy point is that there's no demand. Okay. okay. Economy is not demand and supply money. If the supply is only increased, but no demand. So everyone is sitting very tight, consolidate their resources. Okay. In general, people are more tolerant to each other. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to hold on to this topic a little bit, but I try to not to go a bit deep. I'm just sharing how are we handling this issue right now, okay? Because the factory or the business owner, the business in general are 
going down very, very quickly. Okay. okay. So everyone is evaluating the options. Employees is evaluating options, employees are evaluating options. Even within employee, employee, of course, there's a competition there also, and you know, uh, the evaluation options over here. Okay. So the working environment, I have supported a lot of clients, which is we try to advise the client, not deprive the advisor, but we try to make a sense of that just change the whole HR module. Right. Okay. By reducing, I mean, some people might feel, one of them might say they might not like it, or some people might say they might not like it. But is that reducing the pay, maybe 20 30%. Right. Okay. If you're encouraging work from home, okay, encouraging work from home, okay, have a lower base salary, you just put it some sort of like an ESOS program. Okay. Okay, ESOS program. Okay. You can look at it, okay, if the company revenue mm. at what stage, what is the percentage we're going to take out, how we split the cake. Okay. Okay, I found this is very encouraging, very useful right. for the whole business environment. Right. Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier about the employee part, you know, they are much more tolerant when it comes to dealing with stress. They are much more acceptance when it comes to dealing with stress. And they also know that the options are limited. As an employer, also we have to fine tune a little bit more the product are we are selling, the services are we are selling. But actually, right. As we speak right now, moving forward before open it, I would really encourage a lot of employer employee that we sit down. How do we restructure our HR cost? Let's talk about the cost. Okay. okay. Right. You can lower okay, down to twenty. You can lower down to twenty thirty percent, but right. the incentive program will be have to be very transparent. Okay. Actually, it's a very motivating. Actually, very motivating. There are no better time. Any time in the past that allowed us to do this. Whereas right. right now we have this privilege, sit at home, figure out what to do, take advantage of this period of time. Because during this period of time, employee is the most important thing for an employee is a safety net. Right. Okay, my safety net. Do I have enough to pay for my housing installment to put on the table, my kids go to school, to put title and so on and right now? Right. Okay. In fact, over the last two months, I believe a lot of people save a lot of money you know, because there's nowhere to spend, no need to put that like. Okay. okay. In lockdown for one more month also is not that bad news. Also not that bad because right. we are saving. Okay. 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 But while going through this lockdown, try to stay closer to restructure with your employee. I think this is very, very, very important. Okay. I found it one way to deal with it is a very, very transparent. Okay. Very, very transparent and honest. Okay. Transparent and stay close, right? Yeah. Transfer the stakeholders. The community is very, very important. To me, I don't look at the service industry or trading industry here and there, but be transparent. Okay. Let's, let's, I mean, a lot of business owners here, you always find a way to corner, you always find a way to negotiate a higher price. You always have every employer, every bosses, or every business owner have their own talent and skill to survive. Sure. Okay. Those old skills, might not use work anymore okay because whichever you try to whatever i try to tell my client or try to supply yeah, everyone come to understand like let's let's just cut the crap let's get to the bottom line where are we right now okay. they're finding very, very healthy right the, in fact the business environment are much more healthier even though the economy is not that good healthier okay. people are tend to be more accepting. people are tend to be more tolerant so actually it's quite healthy yeah. In the business okay. of the Hang on a minute. Sorry, please. Hang on a minute. Right, so yeah, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, the trend of communication. Okay, now. Knowing Malaysia, okay, I'm so people, people. Malaysians tend to like to come and meet people to people. Either we get together for breakfast, for lunch, or for yam cha, or for dinner, or just come to want to see you to have a conversation with you. Okay? That privilege is gone. Okay? Get full use of it, embrace it. That privilege is gone. Actually, it's not that bad. I can't enjoy it more by not meeting with so many people. Okay. Okay. So, 
a very big impact in our life during the lockdown or after the lockdown, the observation process actually is come down to communication to me. Okay. But the privilege of seeing person to person, because when I see some person, I kind of engage it, whether it's speaking a truth or it's a tight corner or you try to carry a bit of a lie there or what is going on. But those privilege of seeing people are people are gone, but actually I can't enjoy it after one month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Build back your business community. Okay. Because again, okay, I mentioned this out earlier. Every business owner has their own skill to bring their business to survive their business, either how they can communicate over there, but stay close to the business community. Okay. I think the bottom line comes down to just be transparent. How bad are you right now? How how bad are you now? And then how do you work from there? This is the main topic conversation within the business community. Right. After breakdown until now. So, so I honestly, love, that, it's all of honesty, la, it's not honesty. I mean, we still can come up with other theory the blue bush we can, la, but actually everyone can see it. Okay. Right. Last year I can sell in this for let's say last year I sell this for let's say like 105. Okay. But this year, like, do I want to still sell 105? What can I do at 85? You know, so everyone's just trying to mediate you. So for new business community, I found it a much more healthy environment compared to last year. Right. Okay, because last year the whole trade war hurt a lot of people. Right. It hurt a lot of businesses. So the kind of a business owner kind of figured out like how I'm going to survive. But this big form of this whole lockdown and virus spread actually it gives us a time to reconsult how are we going to move forward. So in all in all and overall I find it personal find it the business environment, the energy are much more stronger, much more positive than last year. Right. Okay. Now, the last point is this. Um, I'm not really... Conference call, yes. Right now, a lot of people are using conference call, Zoom, talking with the staff and so on. But I find it one very, very effective way is to have a 15 minutes phone call. By having the 15 minutes phone call, it kind of can filter out how they want to share the idea over there. So right now, sometimes okay. excited people want to make appointment with me for 15 minutes phone call. Okay. Why 15 minutes? I don't know. If just stretch it to 10 minutes because I find it to 10 to 15 minutes, you kind of can feel it to what is the story behind the story. Okay. okay. And just honest to all parties. This is the first time in my life I've been working in Shanghai for so long. I really can feel the honesty within this whole business community, which I'm very, very happy with. Okay, good. I trust, I trust, I trust you guys will, will, will feel the same too. Because there's right. no more corner, there's no more way we can twist and wiggle ourselves around the issue and so on. Which is sure. very, very positive. Sure. Now, talking about the time just now, time like effect, okay, just to give your guys a general idea. Um, when we have a lockdown, the Every city, every provinces have their own way to manage it. But this is generally what's the timeline we're talking about here. We started, started on 23rd of January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Employee allowed go back to the office about after the 18 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Outlet. So all outlet F and B small outlet able to open up <clears throat> after 40 days. Right. And then the mall, the parking lot, and then last FNB outlet allowed to open up after 52 days. And uh, most of the commercial building that we are working on right now, they are still very full. Right now, school is still not open, up, by the way. As we speak right now, after almost two and a half months, school are still not open yet. Because okay. children and old people are, tend to be more vulnerable over the spread. And right. the school are no one to take the chance, the risk, to open up the school year because at, children tend to be more vulnerable when they're contacted. Actually, adult, I'm not saying that I'm not saying from the 20th point of view, I think adult in our age group are still okay, safe if we just practice a good, good, good social distancing. Okay. Um, now, as of China right now, any of the rest of the world, uh, we're also closing down the border, not allowing foreigners to come in and out. Now, China have about 24 million population over here. About 50% are the migrants. I'm talking about migrants is like a blue collar, even like myself, a foreigner to Shanghai. Right. Okay, right. it's almost 50%. So when they right. are controlling it, it's almost 24 million people. They have really a very, very strategic way. 
okay? And right now, as we speak right now, we are still under eight, okay? Now, remember, the lockdown is to control the curve of the spread. Right. They want to prolong the spread. They want to minimize the spread. But if there is any new outbreak again, it means we defeat the purpose for the first and second round of the lockdown. They have to re-lock again. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, Wuhan and Wubei are going through the second lockdown right now. At this moment? Yes. They have opened up. But yesterday, the red flag go up, they come decide to talk. Okay. I emphasize on this is um of course when they first start being locked in down, people still don't understand why 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 uh this lockdown is so enforced to us, but actually it's quite it's quite important because you see when China having this Wuhan issue, when they start the second lockdown, it means from Chinese New Year until before they unlock, they defeat the whole purpose. They have to start the process all over again. Okay. Of course, this is city by city. Yeah, this is city by city. Okay. Actually, I think uh, I'll touch base a little bit about Malaysia. I think Malaysia also going doing the same approach to strategy, how they're managing the people flow. But unfortunately, right now, Wuhan right. is facing second, lock, second, uh, second lockdown. So they have to start the process of lockdown all over again. But of course, okay. I would say about 20, 30% people from Wuhan and so on, they have left the country. They have left the site, coming back to the city. So not as intense as the first round of lockdown. So, Okay. Um, for you out there, Malaysia, um, um, lock, this lockdown MCO is not uh, something easy, but do respect it because if after we open up, if the rate go up again, it means the whole country will have to go through the same process again, which it will prolong, okay. which which it will prolong the whole economy. It, it's gonna not be good. Okay. So, Discouraging. I hope everyone will support it. Right, right. Understand. Yep. Keep going. Yep. Now, um, I touched base a bit about that just now. Um, the observation stage is we are fighting, challenging. There's no second outbreak. Okay. Once there's second outbreak, then we have to reevaluate the, the whole situation. Now, over here, the country, the country, state to state. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm a bit concerned about, I'm just sharing with you all, especially all the business owners here. Of course, when the government announced the MCO at the time, they give one day of transition period. And a lot of people buy come home, either they look after old folks or stay where they, where, where they are. Okay. Right. Over here in China, when people are coming back from Shanghai, they have to self quarantine for another 14 days before I allow them to come to the office. Right. Okay. I'm, I know tomorrow the health minister is going to announce another lockdown or how to manage it. Um, I hope the government will encourage whoever's coming back to KL, please have another self quarantine for another 14 days before get back right. to the office. Okay. Even though for the office, when coming back to the office, also try to manage the amount of people. Let's say, for example, the office used to have 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 people. Keep a capacity of 50 people. Okay, support this movement moving forward. This is what we are doing right now. Okay, some of the big law firm they used to have about two hundred people on the floor on the on the firm or going to be on the firm right now. They only maintain at thirty percent. But this one is based on the company management decision. But I also support a lot of business owner here also looking to that extent because we just can't afford to have a second outbreak. Then it defeats the whole purpose over here. Yep, I can hear you. Yeah. So, no. so you are saying that even even if the, after the lockdown we have to be uh, on our own, be prudent again and doesn't allow the second outbreak, right? Yeah, but because what we're fighting for, the first round of fight, the first round of battle is we want to suppress the outbreak along it so it doesn't go up. Sharp. But if we're not managing it during this observation stage, if they spark again, I mean we have to start all over again. And this was right. actually right now in Wuhan, and this news has spread out yesterday, and everyone's still a bit edgy, like, damn, do we have to go through this again? You know? Sure. So, even after the lockdown, when you're coming out, okay, mask, okay, this is not a discrimination, wearing mask, 
Okay, of course, wearing mask does not protect you from contracting the virus, but very much it does so that it can limit the spread. Okay, so even now we are opening up the whole Shanghai, pretty much 80 to 90% people still wearing the mask. Okay, right. it's a spirit. We support zero spread. Okay, right. if you so, no, we support zero spread. Okay, it's the same like, remember, we fight for cancer. Right, this, this you're really open, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is the symbol. The red, right. the red new. So now I am yeah. still wearing the mask. Just I protect the zero spread. It's a spirit. All right. Okay. okay. And I hope Malaysia, when you guys are slowly coming up, also slowly adopting it. Okay. In fact, right now, if I go out, I don't put on a mask. I feel, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel I'm part of the people are fighting for this, for this, um, for this like a no, this program. Um, a lot of actually we go to the grab, we're taking grab, we go public transport, we are not allowed to get to the car without a mask. A lot of breathing, we're not allowed to get to get in bed without the pass, uh, without the mask. Sure. Okay, so I'm encouraging everyone, wear the mask, take part of the experience. Right. Understand. Like wearing the red ribbon, uh, like yellow for per se, yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like go for per se. Uh. Okay, so then right now we are we're not doing per se right now, we just you no know, we fight, you know, we fight to make sure the spread, zero spread. Right, great. Keep going, yes. Uh, uh, this is I just gone through very quickly. Um how we do it here is like if you look at the handphone, there's a green one. So everyone has this tracking device on their phone. So this tracking device will tell us where have we been and are we have been in Shanghai for the next 14 days. Okay. Hong Kong right now they have to wear a banner. I'm not sure Malaysia right now there's any tracking device you can you can track someone where have they been. The most importantly is that have they been to red zone? How long they've been in okay. red zone? Because right. you have a red zone, green zone, or moderate zone. Again, so if I've been into the red zone area, I just come out, the hand mobile phone there will not be green, it will be red. Okay, so how we do is that even if I go for meeting, I'm meeting someone, I go to any commercial, I have to show that this is my past. So, so I'm green. Okay. <laughs> okay. Understand. The so, a, yeah, the, the next one is the temperature. The right. temperature test. We have it in all over the place. Sometimes right. we by the time we leave the house, we get to office, we get test. We get to the car, we get test, we go to cafe, we get test, sometimes we get test by fifty or sixty my sorry, by five to six times a day. Okay. And the government also taking there's a, one thing about China, there are a lot of volunteers. Okay. The so-called volunteer, they are generally they are the retired government servant. Okay, right. they are very quickly taking role as well. Try to support this observ observation observation process during this period of time. Sure. Okay. Right. We used to like to check hand and hug. We don't do that anymore. Okay. Right. It might sound very very awkward to you, but it just become a norm. Either we do namaste, food, right, food cake. You see, food cake is between brother and brother. Bro, how are you doing, man? You do a food cake. <laughs> okay. Food owner, you have to do a... Elbow. Elbow. All right. Sounds good, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. So right, a, right. Uh, yeah, there's a normal. There's a norm. How are we living our new normal? Okay. Try not to meet too many people. Why are we doing that? We try to fight for this uh, zero spread. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any question before I move to other topics? Um, no, I, I think it's good. We have some question ready for you. Uh, once you start, once you're done, I think there's another one slide only, right? One uh, slide. Another two slide, but I go very, very quickly. Lah, huh? The next one. Lah, huh? Okay. Cool. Now, okay. I think we are, we are, I'm a big, big, big fan of sport. Okay, this year we're not going to enjoy anything anymore. Okay, F1 are done. There's no trade show. Um, unfortunately, Olympic also is going to be cancelled. Euro Cup is not going to happen this year. So the rest of the year, we're not going to enjoy sport. Okay. Right. So in China, what are we talking about those days? These days. Okay, we still want a major event. So the next big event that everyone is looking for is election. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I'm not, I'm, sure you. Fan, I'm not a big fan of, I'm not getting the political discussion right now. Okay. And you know, um, 
China and America is going through this trade war. Okay, they've been fighting and fighting and fighting. So right. a lot of discussion going on right now is that since we can't, I mean, you know, China are big fans of the Olympics. We always like to take, take a local matter, but since we can't do that, so a lot of people discuss about this election, okay? Because this will still go on, all right? Of course, I'm not a big fan of Donald Trump, uh, again. But the trend of overall, I kind of feel, okay, I mean, we can't control the election. This is American internet issue. But I think a kind right. of trend overall, the Chinese in general kind of okay for him to stay put for another four years. Mm. Okay, why is that? Because this year there have been too many surprises already. Okay, it's okay. Let him just stay, just just stay there for four more years. Okay, there's no more new new surprises. Okay, in fact, going through what China been through this last two three months, people are getting much more stronger. As I said mentioned earlier, uh, right. the business environment as a whole actually more positive. The mindset, not the numbers, right. not the mindset. Okay. Okay. If Donald Trump will win, which very likely I think so. Of course, the trade war will go on. I think China are be more prepared. Because when the Chinese community, when they talk about business right now, not only about what are we doing this year, what are we doing next year, what are we doing following year, okay? I think they are more, more prepared, more confident are going to the next round of trade war, if that's going to happen. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, so, just sit down and wait to see what's the result. No, no, I'm just saying to you, if I'm China, I want him to stay also. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because... I mean, if you've been seeing him, how he managed the whole crisis, uh, it's become a very big joke. Um, of course, China right. has to take advantage. Why not just stay there for another four years? I know. And then I think China are more prepared for to go through another trade war battle. Right now, everyone are in the reconsolidation, reconsolidating state to serve the resources. Right. And that's, right. And then that's what we're Now, we talk about economic prediction, uh, economic prediction, uh, okay? Mm-hmm. I myself, Hopefully, before I know yesterday, there was another outbreak. I was very hopeful, more optimistic. Hopefully, to see the turnaround, the economy. Right? I hope to see a turnaround by July, August. Right. Okay. But given the another outbreak coming out, uh, the election is coming out and so on. But actually, most of the conversation everyone talking about is let's prepare for next year. Okay. Okay. Let's prepare for next year. Let's prepare for next year. Let's prepare for the trade war. And this is generally the like conversation that we have from them. Okay. Okay, understand. I, I know that. And uh, I think I think that's that's wise. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Okay, there's something to almost my last slide, Eddie. There's something that the trick I want to share with your guys. How do we lubricate the situation? One of the things that I've been learning since the first day I got here until now, I find it very, very useful. Okay. Now, China is a very, very very Kanjong industry, you know, every calling, quite and quite and here and there. But I find this trick is very, very good. Just by using the word mama lai. Mama lai. Okay. Right. It's just a good trick how we use it over here. Like if there's any crisis control, how do we manage it? Just by saying mama lai. Right. Okay. <laughs> control the action to control the action. Okay. Like man, we can't control once the action starts very hard to control the action man. But this same like mama line. Okay. I find it very useful and I find it especially I'm not I'm not saying everyone's using it, but every time I use this little trick that the other parties sort of okay, okay, I'll just back up a little bit. Okay, and then we see how we reconsult, how we see we we, we reconsult that prolong the line, prolong the action. Good. Just my little theory that I just share with everyone just around. Uh, um, I think that's already. useful. You can't yeah. rush anyway. You can't rush anyway, but the 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 excitement I think what Malaysia are really anxious right now is what is gonna happen when we reopen up. But what I advise you here, everyone, if the government allows slowly opening up in the business community or the office, please still practice the observation stage, manage the people among among people in the office. Okay, if there's any issue coming, if there's any disagreement or anything, just let them know my life. There's nothing we can rush right now. Even China right. are saying, even people saying China is ahead of the game, I doubt it because the rest of the world can't do anything. We only can slowly reconsult, reconsolidate what are we going to do. Okay. Reconsolidate, okay. yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. So this whole year is going to be reconsolidated what we do. What, what we do. Two now, years, that's what you said. The last but not least, uh, friendly capture to everyone. 
over here in Shanghai too. Last time you used to say ni hao, goodbye or whatever. Right now it's a comment that we just say we wish everyone sen ti jian kang, sen tai jin hong. I think that's most importantly. Okay, good health. Terima kasih kesehatan. Okay, so I'm leaving it to here and thank you very much. I wish you all the best of health. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Uh, for those of you who feel that Pablo have been uh, done a great sharing, can you give me a three? Can you give a three to everyone? Please give a three to everyone. And I'm going to uh, now start the q and I'm not going to start with my own question and my summary first. Uh, I see that you have some questions here. And thank you for your question. And keep your question coming. Because with your question coming, then I can then channel and ask to uh, Pablo. Oh, you can see a lot of three, a lot of love flying into you. Huh? Right. Uh, hey, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know um, try to put my thoughts together. I think what's important to you all. But... What I'm trying to say, I would still think this is a very, very good transition period. Enjoy it. When you guys come out, you know, embrace it. Thank you very much, okay. everyone. Uh, by the way, this is not the end yet. Uh, we are now starting some of the Q&A that uh, some of you are posting. Please stay on for that. And if you have more questions, please ask. Just to highlight to you, Pablo told me yesterday, he said that, you know, to prepare for this talk, I is like doing uni assignment all over again. I can see some of our uni friends who is tuning in uh, you know how Pablo do his assignment up anyway. Normally, it would be some alcohol next to it, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but but I think I think it's useful right now that uh, we'll just go through uh, some of the questions that uh, we have recorded earlier. And I want uh, maybe Pablo to go through one by one and, and then just share with you your view uh, before I end up summarizing what I've learned from you. Is that okay, Pablo? Are you ready yes, to take on some questions? Okay, Absolutely. good. So let's... Let's start with some question. Okay, uh, I have a question from KK Ng. He just said that by comparing between the economic stimulus package launched by Malaysia and those in China, I'm sure from the, from the thing that you know, uh, what are the government aids that you think China government is doing but not by our government yet that is different? I not really spend much time to look at what Malaysia is offering. Okay. But if you talk about it, um, you mean by monetary supply, like money part, or you talk about... No, no, anything. Anything that the government is doing at this moment that I think is, uh, that Malaysia is not doing, that you think is good. I mean, since you can't compare, I think the, the bright question to you is that, what do you like the most in terms of what the government of China is doing in helping businesses? Employer, employee. I, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier about this stimulation package. I think one thing we feel directly impact is from the bank. Okay. I think that that is really um, um, reduce the stress level. Secondly, it's right. a stimulation package to subsidize. Okay. The subsidize is quite, quite a bit complex. I think Malaysia has a subsidized food program and uh, China has its own subsidized program. I also mentioned earlier that you know, we could go through the harder to provide for the couple of high school, but yes, it becomes a few months. Okay. But okay. it is still going about managing the whole. I'm not. I'm moving away from about this uh, government subsidies. Okay, I'm moving away about managing the MCO. I feel. Right. I feel Malaysia. There's still a lot to do to manage the MCO because I um as I mentioned earlier, the body kampung is back. When people coming back, how is Malaysia going to handle it? Okay, I think sure. Malaysia will do more control over it. Maybe have like as I mentioned, the uh, green the green um. Uh, the green, the green pass, how we coming back to the city. I think that is very, 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 very important. Okay, uh, so so I'm gathering from you. Uh, Pablo, by the way, can you uh, turn off the slide first so that we can all see your face bigger? I'm not sure how you do it, but anyway, uh, if just, just slowly do it. But I'm just saying to you, why well, summary from your question, uh, why well, I'm summary from your answer just now, you're basically saying that uh, the bank and subsidies to uh, uh, that is currently done by the Chinese government is useful. I think the Malaysian government should continue doing that. And you have highlighted one thing that is very important. I think is about the balik kampung effect. I think there's two ways to look at that effect. Number one is the, the effect on the 17 or 18 yeah. that when we experienced earlier on, when we announced the lockdown or when we announced the MCO, everyone need to go back. Correct? No, that's, that's one fine. part. Yeah. Okay, uh, but the other part of it, I think is also important for Malaysia to know is this, is also after we lifted the MCO, after we lifted the MCO, 
correct? And then everyone start to rush back to KL again, right? Yeah. And then again, yeah. there's the big rush. So I think that needs to be managed slowly. So yeah. for those of you yeah. who, are, who are tuning in uh, with the ears of the authority with you, and I think just please convey that. And I think even if we lifted the MCO, it has to be done slowly, right? So because the, the tendency is, for example, if let's say 15 is the day we come back to work, on the 14, I can have the big jam in the, in the North-South Highway again, correct? For example, in that sense. So I think uh, uh, that would be the... Uh, thanks for the answer, uh, uh, Pavo. Let's look at the second question I have here. Uh, this is from Anthony. So Anthony is asking, uh, what can we learn from China on post-MCO uh, strategy as Malaysia will be one of the few early countries which must grapple with the unknown for the post-MCO business continuity? So basically, what can we learn from China? Uh, because Malaysia will be very likely to be one of the early countries that also step up to the MCO since it's given that way, so what can we learn from China? Uh, I emphasize this on the observation period. Okay. Right. Make sure we still carry the spirit. Right. Mitigate the spread. That right. is a top priority. That's a top, top right. priority. I, I, as I mentioned a bit touch of this earlier, like in Malaysia, I just get excited when I come back to KL. No? But coming back to KL also encourage the employee who just, whoever just come back from Kampong, Please have another self quarantine for 14 days. Access the situation. Okay, this right. is, over here is a regulatory. It's enforced. Okay, over here is enforced that if my company, if I'm not practicing to my employee, to me it's like a no. I it's, it's a crime. They take it very very seriously. Okay. Sure. sure. Now just I mentioned a little bit a lot of this like a voluntary. The volunteer they coming out also taking a very big part of that as well. Just like a look, look put the tanker. Okay. Okay. But I'm also taking my big part because even um, as I mentioned earlier yesterday, because the the hack, the second the second peak is going to come up in Wuhan, and that kind of shift the whole momentum right now. Right. So I'm still. So you are fearful that if those are not controlled properly, is it is is likely oh. that Shanghai will also go into a second outbreak? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not, not Shanghai, like maybe for the other countries, the other the, 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 the wearing the mask movement and everyone is very supporting it. Everyone is putting a very high spirit on it. And that's very, very important. That's why we have right. created like a social system within us. And we are practicing it and we are doing it. So we are not really encouraging, hey, let's go out for beer and hug and do this and just, just don't. You know? Right, we so do Shanghai this. I will not do it because Shanghai has been the first city as well. I think China, Shanghai, China, Shanghai in, in overall, they are quite authority. They're very, very full of authority, what they want to, how, how they want to get, and how, very authority, submissive to authority. Okay. 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 I think, right. I think we see Malaysia, I just want to highlight it. I think mostly Malaysia is about the, the people that are here, you know. I just want to play a very big part of it because this is very, very important. Without the people support, Whatever corporate try to enforce it is going to keep the whole thing. Okay, good. Uh, Mike, my, another question is uh, from Vincent, basically. Uh, the question is for you is saying that, you know, uh, since everything is going online at the moment, uh, does it mean that there's an on, uh, a search of online activities and whether the infra in China can support it? Uh, will we, I mean, my question is that number one is that, you know, already you have a very good infra for 5G or whatever that is that you're doing. And, and now that everyone is going online, for example, uh, do we have a problem where the, the infra cannot support? No. Nope. No. Nope. And do you think we have a problem in Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the problem with China infra is that we have to use VPN to for a lot of overseas news. That is the only restriction that can us a bit not easy. Actually, Malaysia right. over infra, I don't know, but I in China throughout from the beginning until now, everything runs very, very smoothly. Right. Where the government are pumping more to upgrade the facility because they're seeing this online education, online gaming, online so on and on and on and on. So we are really like moving up to build the foundation of the platform. So no, still so under. Okay, um, so basically for those of you who still have questions, please post it on the chat. I will go through each and every one of them before I do a conclusion of this. I know we have gone by the one hour, 
I thank you for your attention, but I think that is really useful. I see there are a lot of questions still coming in. So, Pavo, can you hang on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. So just to highlight to, to everyone what, what Pablo, I, I like the way Pablo laugh when they talk about Malaysia's infra, infra can support or not. So I, I think that gives us a lot of good indication and confidence. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question I have for you uh, is that how is the property construction activity uh, in China? Is it resuming? Uh, uh, you, know, you know, you have a lot of construction going on even near your house. No, it's not moving. It's not, I would say they're probably running at 20, 30% capacity, okay? Now, okay. one main thing is this, right now we actually under observation, okay? In China, the blue collar, the worker are come from, come from outside of Shanghai. Outside, yeah. Outside of Shanghai. And the China, Shanghai right now, they are still very strict for people coming country to country. Just I mentioned a little bit, like Paris Campo, it's like after people coming back in. So a lot of construction right. companies, first of all, they are still shortage of paper. Right. Secondly, just prolong it a little bit. Just prolong it. It's okay. So, so basically, uh, there's no concern about late delivery. Late delivery, like for example, remember you said that, you know, like production, they penalize you if there's delay. Construction, yeah. I'm sure they'll penalize you as well, right? Yeah, but most of the construction, they say the major, con the major contractor here building high building are state owned. Major is a state owned. Okay. Okay, it's not a privatized one, but of course, a smaller scale one, yes, it's private, but most of the big construction are associated with the state owned. So, right. the government and government, they are trying to take each other. Okay, let's, let's, let's pull a hold this, let's focus on this. Okay, a lot of government building, okay, let's divert the, the fund, they try to cut small and enterprise businesses, so they have a lot of million around. So, to answer the question, the construction is going on, it's, it's probably running at 20 30 percent of their. Yeah, ten capacity before this thing. Which means that they are they are allowed to come back to work. They are allowed to come back to work slowly. But there's not enough laborer. No, not enough enough labor is one thing. Remember this I mentioned also the manufacturer. Okay. Yep. How to reopen up department by department by department. I think everyone, yep. even the construction company, also doing that in the same time. Right. Rather and running a full force building twenty story building within six months. They're going to put that whole thing on hold. Right. Okay. My, uh, my next question, I'm just saying to you is that my, my feedback on that uh, in relation to the Malaysian side too, so that everyone who are listening and can help full because I've been making a lot of phone calls to my client who are also on construction and everything. The Malaysian's uh, concern, number one, is really on our foreign uh, laborer. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, at the moment, they are not, not gaining their daily wages. They are also stuck here. They don't know what to do. And whether when we come back, can we do back in full force? I think learning from you, what is trying to happen is that even uh, when we come back, I don't think we can go back on full force. So for those people who are in construction, uh, get ready and you need to renegotiate your contract perhaps. Because yeah. in Malaysia, yeah. most of it is not government owned. Most of it are actually privately owned. Yeah. I, again, okay. I, I, again, I just want to highlight to everyone, let's Mama Lai, one step at a time, do not run back to the full force. We will jeopardize a lot of the hard work that we've been working on, on this whole MCO. So this is- Okay, good. So, yep, I understand. So, Man Man Lai, everyone remember, that means slowly, okay? Um, despacito, yes, very good. So now, let me uh, ask you the next question. Uh, during the lockdown period, this is from Dato Ng Si Eng, uh, is China's government department open for business? Licenses, application, and approval. No. So, uh, so absolutely no. No, the bank. Even right now. Uh, no, the government. If we are applying for licensing and everything, no, not during the first two phase, huh? okay. Not during the first two phase. On the observation right. stage, I think it's somewhere about during mid of February. Then they slowly open it up. But even government building, they do not allow full capacity. Remember, I mentioned that. Only about 30-30% right. people are allowed to get in. So if we are doing a licensing process, we are, if you're doing any application licensing, it has slowed down. It has slowed down. Okay. Okay. My, my question to you is this. My question to you is that uh, what about now at this moment? Uh, how many percentage of the government agency or department are opening? If we are just, just I mean, we won't hold. 60% was it? 60%? No. 60 government agency department has all opened already. It's all important. Right. But the people right. are working there is still very limited. But one thing about okay. what about um 
government agency, they have to slot already in the e-online application. Most of right. them, but this, but this infrastructure they have built over the last couple of years already. So the process okay. might be a bit slow, the poor might be slow, but yes, it is still fine function. When I talk about 50, 60 percent, I'm talking about people's capacity to work in the office. Okay. But my question to you is like, I mean, you do a lot of work dealing with government authority, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so can you 100% perform your job yet? No. 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 They kind of can give them a call. There's a lot of delay to get approval, that's for sure. Right. But they are not, they are not jamming us, not stopping us to get what, like, what, what we want. They okay. are just probably a bit of delay in facilitating us, coping with us. Because okay. remember, when they open up, it's also coming from instruction from the top. Do not go full force. Let's hold it one step at a time. Okay. My so the momentum is still there. Yeah. The momentum is still there. We call them. They'll pick up the phone. Yes. Okay. An application. But um, the 60% is about the capacity there. But over the momentum are still there. Okay. Understand? Understand. So I think that uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, just wondering. Uh, the next question is that any advice to property development and construction industry player to be more sustainable during this period and even post uh, the, the lockdown or MCO? Anything that you, you can share? Um, the real estate market la, as an individual buyer, la, the real estate market is not looking good la, this year. Okay, why? Right. I go to the uh, disposable income. Okay, ever refinancing, right. ever refinancing. Okay, so the real estate market is not looking good for this year. Right. Okay. But whether, whether there's a big development, big construction, I, what I see, what I'm just sharing with you, what I see, not what I think, is there are major slowdown in construction. Okay. Okay. When they will pick it up, end of this year to next year, I would say. Okay. Okay. Good. So the answer to KK Ng on your question, basically, just saying that this moment, really, you have to slow it down and really you have to uh, think through what you can do, right? Is that a beer there? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, continue. Uh, let's ask the question. Uh, what are the key learning points and preparation for Malaysian going forward? If, you, if, if there's only one or uh, one thing. Malaysian. Sorry, sorry, I, I, I missed you the last bit. What is the key learning so what point? Is the, what, what are the key learning points that you have us for today? Going forward. I, I'm sorry, I missed, I just, there's a bit of problem. What is the key learning point? I said, what are the key learning points you have for us today to prepare Malaysian moving forward? One. Um, the key learning point, I think I can emphasize a couple of times in the presentation, um, the spirit, the spirit to, 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 to better this MCO and really understand what is the reason behind it. Okay, right. I think Malaysia as a whole, I don't think they, they, they understand the gravity over it. Right. I, my gut feeling, I have, I'm, I'm not, I'm not seeing that here. I think. No, we trust the gut feeling there. Okay, <laughs> but the beginning point, I mean, one of the very difficult things what Malaysia has been through, which we have gone through, is the first two weeks a lot of negative news. Those negative news actually make a major impact on payment decision making. That what happened in China as well. But China are much right. more active. They're always very fast and cutting off, delayed all these news when you try to go public. Okay, I think one thing about China has done very well on that. Sure, okay. sure. Here, let me point, here come back to it. Understand the purpose of Tokyo MTO. Stay away from all these negative news because you can really get messed up. And practice the social distances and understand practice social distances. Actually, it's not that bad. It's good. After I, I got it, actually, I find it um, kind of healthier in the mindset. I find it that way. Okay. Okay. So, so basically, I'm summarizing this uh, for the purpose of that question uh, that's coming from uh, YS Chin. So, basically, you're saying that, you know, we probably do not understand as Malaysian the gravity of the entire problem. But in any event, uh, we should stay away from negative news and really uh, uh, understand the objective of the entire MCO. And uh, you feel that after the MCO, you feel that you're clearer in your mind and you feel healthier in your mind. I think that's important, so that's a good take home. Uh, the next one, uh, Lawrence Lai is asking, how corporate training provider uh, uh, is also facing, uh, in handling the COVID-19 apart from being virtual? Apart from you know being those virtual. corporate trainers, uh, apart from going online, doing virtual classroom and everything, 
how does the the corporate uh, uh, trainers in the sense doing this? For example, those event, those training program. No, 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 no major event, no team building, no, no. We are still not encouraged. We're not allowed to do that right now. I'll just say no. So what are they doing? Uh, do you observe any of these corporate trainer doing differently? Only on virtual. Other than online. Only on virtual. Only online. There's still no physical thing. There's still no physical. Uh, um, there's still no physical training like coming to corporate trainer or doing a team building exercise. No, so we still. The big corporate, the government, even even myself, the small business, we still don't encourage that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay, good. So that answer you, Lawrence. And let's see what other question that I have. Uh, okay. Uh, as a Malaysian yourself, this is from Michael Hill. Huh? How do you see Malaysia and the market react after everything starts to open up again? I really can't answer that because, um, of, course, um, of course, I hope I hope for the best. I'm saying it because, of course, um, just before the NCO, there's a new government coming up. There's a new form of government is setting up. So I'm not a political analysis, but just to see how I hope this. Of course, I hope Malaysia will find its way even through the NCO, but I did, what I mentioned, mentioned earlier, to be honest, I think the business community, the mindset is going to be very, very healthier. But whether the business will go next time jump, just don't hold that expectation, because I think China are not having a big economy growth, the whole world are just holding back. That's our economy perspective. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your answer. I think uh, that answer you, Michael. Next one. Um, um, that I have no question here. Let me just scroll down and see who else is asking any question. Thanks for staying tuned. Um, and, and you can see plenty of thank you giving to you, uh, Pablo. You can see that, right? Okay. Uh, and then let's see. Thanks, Pablo and Chris. Good talk. Growing the China in the project and whatnot. Okay, good. So I'm saying to you is that, uh, Pavel, um, um, for those of you who are tuning in, if you're interested to have a recording version of this, uh, uh, do make the request, all right? And I can see, Pavel, our good friend Balu is just coming in and say hi. Anyway, <laughs> and, and, and what I'm trying to highlight now is that uh, I'm going to give a few takeaways that I have. By the way, um, I'm going to share in the article, uh, the five things that we learned from this session. I'm going to write an article to that. I'm going to share with Pablo content and everyone who are interested. So if you are uh, interested to this and what happened is that, can you give me a five, All right? And then we will send this article to you and publish it. And we are recording this session as well. If you are interested to have the thing about my summary of Google, five things that we learned from this. Obviously, um, I don't have the five things just yet, but I'm just thinking that the few things that strike very heavily in my mind. Pablo, so thank you again for your time. And these are the summary that I want to get for my uh, listener and participant in this group. Uh, I think number one, I think it's important to highlight number one, number one, uh, that everyone, it is important right now to focus on communication. I think I cannot stress more about communication, I, particularly in relation to employee and employer. Yeah. Good communication yeah. is hard to come. And we need to have good communication in order for us to, to do this properly. And I think it's important um, uh, uh, communication have to be done timely. To me, is that, you know, no need to do Zoom, no need to do Microsoft Teams, no need to do Google Hangout. It's fine not to see the face, but at least pick up the phone and say hi. I think it's important right now just to say it. Um, uh, uh, be very personal to make sure that this person is okay before you go into an issue. That's number one that I think is important. And number two, I think the, the, the other thing that I've learned from Shanghai from the sharing is this. I think the block thinking is very important. The block thinking help you go into this whole thing. Like for example, we understand that there are delay. We understand there are losses. There are, there are time of uh, low productivity and everything else. And I think uh, in order to settle the dispute, we have to start to think about block, decay, uh, uh, block thinking. So what does block thinking in the typical Malaysian word means case to case basis. Old case, forget about it. Let's talk about new case, which means that the last one, yes, we screw up, you screw up, everyone screw up, fine. Let's work on this to get us through first. You have an immediate demand, let's deal with the current demand and finish it and we'll deal with that screw up later. So I'm saying to you is that I think the block thinking is important even, even in managing your employee. I think that's interesting because even talking to an employee to say that, you know, we understand there's low productivity, 
uh, there's no income, there's nothing coming in for that matter. I think it's important that we need to highlight to them to say, fine, forget about it. We have a new normal to deal with. All right. And because of the new normal to deal with, we have to do differently. And guess that everyone will be more motivated now. Let's do uh, something extra and we cannot keep doing what we are doing. In the new normal, we have to do something literally different and everyone will be a little bit more flexible. Notwithstanding, our option is smaller. We don't have too much option. So as a result, we need to start to think by uh, block thinking. And even the third one, I think is very important for those of the employer here and employees here. I think it's important to also understand that even when the uh, MCO is over, right, and we need to open it again, uh, be sure you have some policy in place to make sure that there will still be batches and batches for people to come back on different time. I don't think you need to crowd your workplace. That's number one. Number two is very important to say that, you know, learn to create your um, productivity from uh, processes that you need to put in place for this whole idea of working from home. I think they say it takes 21 days to, to, to learn how to work from home. So, or, or to form a habit. So currently we are already past 21 days here. Uh, we, are, we are sort of coming terms to this whole idea. That's why we are managing this at this moment to do this. So learn to work from home and, and, and try to, even after the lockdown, don't rush everything back and everything will become back slowly. And I like the message of Man Man Lai, okay, uh, which is very similar to my common message to a lot of time when I do a sharing where I, I end in the, in the stage. I always say this word. I say in Malaysia, everything is slowly but surely, right? So that's Pasito, everyone. So I'm trying to highlight to you is that everything will come to a rightful conclusion. And I think it is important that we will take it slowly, get the right information, and then we, uh, we can move forward. And the last thing I think is quite important, I pick it up, although it's not a very, very important point that we hear, but I like the sound of it because I think the government incentive or stimulus package is not to ensure you that you have continued growth. I think that's important, right? It's to ensure you, you survive this year, all right? And next year, we'll start again. And I think uh, effectively on everyone's mind in relation to this whole thing, we need to come to term, and, and I think in China, it's, it's, it's especially well, uh, you said, let's talk about next year. Let's forget about this year. Let's talk about 2021. So 2020 never exists in a way. Right, so there's a suddenly bleep, you know, suddenly Thanos snapped his finger and 2020 is gone, and therefore we have 2021. I think that's important. And the last point that I would just want to end up this whole thing is that um, I thank everyone for your time. Uh, I think social distancing let us get closer, like it yeah. or not, right? Yeah. Although we are not hugging each other, we are not kissing each other, we are not holding hands, we are not doing anything in that sense, but it gets us closer. We never hardly have this time to really talk to each other. And I think uh, well, one thing that you have mentioned just now, people are getting more friendly, right? Yeah. People become more uh, open. People become more honest. I think the honesty is a, is a fresh air kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, we must be very honest with ourselves and very honest with others because at this moment, uh, without an honest answer and honest information, it's very hard to move forward. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Pablo, for your time. Thank, thank you very you, much. Please help me thank Pablo again with a five if you are still there, right? And um, and, and and I hope that Pablo en en enjoy this. And Pablo actually very rarely speak on this, and he's yeah. very nervous and very happy that he actually do it. And for that, uh, Pablo, I owe you one round of beer. The next time we can do virtual cheers. All right. Yeah, but, yeah man. <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone. So uh, we will post the article, the five things we learned from today's sessions. Uh, once I'm uh, done, I will post it on our social media. I will share it with everyone. And then uh, I'll share it with Pablo as well. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Five and stay safe, stay calm. Thanks, Tato. Right? Stay yeah, safe, thank stay you. calm. The best of health. Good safe. health. Good health, everyone. Good health. Good health. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. One more lie. Yes, Tato. One more lie. All right. So I'm signing off with the word man, man, lie. Okay. Anyone who needs anything uh, which we can help you, basically, please do approach us. Chair Associate is open as usual. 
if you need any consultation from Pablo, also please do that because uh, uh, he obviously on the front line at the moment, he knows how to deal with your staff. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, his majority thing, you know, it's consultancy is on HR as well. Employer, employee, keep an eye. And uh, CA uh, is always here to help. Just to, re just to remind everyone, uh, Pablo actually is my good friend, my housemate. And he's been in Shanghai for the longest time. He's always my president for my Malaysia Student Association. Oh. <laughs> All right, Balu, yes, Masabu, yes. All right, and then we are just highlighting to you is that when he was the president, I'm always backing him up. And of course, when I was the president, he backed me up too. So this is the spirit. And very rarely, we try to learn from our boss school. This is the time we must learn from him. Because he always said, I help you, you help me. All right, so with that, if you are interested, uh, please uh, uh, let us know. And then give me a five to thanks, Pablo, for the day. And thank you for tuning in. Okay, um, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I see that you clapping hand already. Thank you. Thank All right, you. thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. So, uh, uh, we will stay online, Pablo, me, and you, and uh, uh, uh and 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 Pansy, uh, if we need anything else. Um, so, uh, everything else, everyone, just uh, we'll, we'll publish the thing and thank you for tuning in again. Pansy, what's the total number just now at the peak? Then uh, I double check again. Okay, can 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 you switch off the rest of them? Balu. <laughs> <laughs> hey Balu, how are you? Can't hear you. Uh, sorry, you've been muted. Uh, can you hear me now or not? Ah, uh, can 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 can. How are you, Macha? I'm uh, good, lah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well done, man, Pao and Chris. Oh, no problem, hey, no problem. I hey, forgot you, you la, I joined Lampard actually. Hey, never mind, never mind. send you the video link later. Thanks, man. Okay, guys, I'll see you all soon, okay? Let's see you, right. right. Take care, take care. Bye. Stay safe, man. Bye. Hey, how to come up? Ah, oh, they're here. <laughs> And see. Yes, yes. I remove them now for now. Okay. Yeah, we're still here. Just just wait, uh Pensy, just uh Pablo, wait, wait. Yeah, 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 so I'm here.